Hey guys, Hot Jupiter here, coming at you with another installment of Kerbal Space Program. Finally, it's been quite a while since I played this game, and that was partly due to uh, some hardware changes that I made to my computer, and basically summer break laziness. So, also, this is a post commentary because after I basically formatted and reinstalled my entire computer, I forgot to enable the microphone and bandicam, so when I was basically all said and done, I'm left over with about an hour's worth of great video, but no commentary. So this is going to be a post-commentary video. Um, as you can see here, I'm just going through the tech tree, deciding you know which upgrades to get, because in the last mission, um, basically I went to the moon to get a whole bunch of sides in orbit around the moon but in this particular episode I decided that it was time to finally land some Kerbals on the surface because what good is just orbiting the moon if you're not going to actually go down and land on it. Um, now the upgrades I made to my computer I decided to finally jump on the bandwagon and grab a solid state drive. Uh, basically Newegg was having a sale a couple weeks ago for a Samsung uh, 500 gigabyte solid state drive so I picked that up for 170 and on top of that I also bought a new video card. I upgraded from my AMD 5850 and now I have a Sapphire Radeon R9 280 and I love it so far. Ah uh, yes we did a little switch here we are in the vehicle assembly building so this is kinda gonna be like a commentary on what I'm watching and also just me yammering on about random topics that I see fit. <laughs> so bear with me guys. Um, yeah, basically I purchased the lander can because I feel like it's the best option to land on the moon with. I mean, why make a lander if you're not going to use a lander can, right? Um, but anyway, I basically wanted to use the solid state drive as my primary hard drive with Windows on it. So basically I had to format, get rid of all my old install files, and that took a while to back everything up because I, when I bought this computer it was about 2009. Now, since that moment, I hadn't formatted this computer once because I've never had a problem with it. It's, it was just so well built. It's an iBuy powered that I never had any problems. So formatting this thing was a bit of a tricky task, trying to back everything up. Um, but basically, when I installed the hard drive, everything was great for a day or two, but then it started just randomly freezing on me. And after a couple Google searches, I found that people were having this, like, similar problems with their solid state drives. Um, basically what I ended up doing to fix the problem was I had to go into BIOS and change the controller from IDE to AHCI. And because apparently you're supposed to run your solid state drives on AHCI mode, I didn't know that. So I switched it over to AHCI and Bob's your uncle, or Jeb's your uncle, it was fine after that and it's been working beautifully and perfectly ever since then. So I don't know, if you guys have a solid state drive and you're having problems with it freezing, consider switching over in BIOS to AHCI. It's a whole process to make sure you look it up. Heck, maybe I might as well do a video on it. Who knows? Um, but anyway, then I installed uh, the new video card, and I love it. It runs great. But like I said, when I went to record this video, I did a whole commentary on it, and it didn't get recorded because stupid me forgot to enable my microphone. <laughs> so here I am, talking post post commentary wise looks like I'm adding some science modules on here which you know if you're going to the moon you might as well do that science do as much science as you can now I think I decided to put a heat shield on here but if I remember correctly I don't think I end up using it I'm here I am trying out different heat shields and uh, deciding that that's just ridiculous and too big <laughs> So I decided to go with this smaller one here, which actually doesn't really end up working out the way that I thought it was going to work out. But you'll see when we get to the end of that video there. Now I've tried to edit this video down, it was like at least an hour long at first. Now it's down to, you know, 35 minutes, it might get shorter than that, who knows. Basically I just chopped out all the boring bits, did all the exciting bits, here I am making a lander for the moon. It actually worked out pretty well too. So if you guys want to go ahead and try this design that I'm making, by all means, go right ahead. But yes, I'm going to try to 
get off my summer laziness and get back into gear again. Start making more Kerbal videos for you guys. Because I know you guys probably wondered where the heck I was and if I'm ever coming back. You know, it's just it's just my personality type. I kind of I, I go through periods where I'm like really gung ho about something and I'll like do the hell out of it. I'll like turn it up to eleven and it'll be like an obsession. But then I'll hit this wall and I'll just completely lose all interest in anything I was doing. And that's kind of how it's been with me in YouTube. Um, as you guys probably know who've been we been with me since the beginning, I'll go through little short bursts where I'll make a whole crap load of videos and then I'll suddenly disappear for like three months <laughs> with no word. I don't know, that's 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 unfair to you guys and that's there's no way that's no way to, to be a successful YouTuber. But that's just kind of the reality of you know, who I am and a little bit about my personality. You know, I, I probably have some kind of form of ADD <laughs> where I, I'm kind of all over the place. I can't ever focus on anything for a while. And if I do, it's, it becomes an obsession uh, only for me to get bored with it very quickly. But I will try, you know, harder to be a little more consistent with my videos because I know a lot of you guys enjoy watching these. And I really appreciate uh, all you guys who have been um, with me since the beginning. You know, every little comment, every positive comment from you guys really helps, like in ways you don't even understand. Like, just a simple, like, hey, Hot Jupiter, I really miss your videos, you know, please come back. Like, that alone will, like, kickstart me right back into wanting to make more videos again. And maybe that's what happened. Somebody commented on my most recent video. I'm going to try to pull it up here. And they basically said, please don't give up. You know, and I said, wow, you know what? they're right. I should I should just stop being lazy and get back on it. It was... Where is he? Ace Tanker Paul. Thank you very much. Um, you said, please don't ditch this channel. And uh, don't worry. I haven't ditched it. I'm not going anywhere. And I guess I could take this time to answer some questions, too. Um, let's see. Uh, Gil Aragon. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. He asked, hey, which mod do you use for the cool atmosphere and cloud effects? I can't find any mod for this this kind for KSP 1.0. Um, basically, I'm using the Astronomer's Visual Pack Edge of Oblivion version. Now, the most recent version is Interstellar, uh, but for some reason, one reason or another, I couldn't get that version to work on my computer. It just crashed every time. I mean, I could probably try it again now that I've upgraded my hardware, but I doubt it. So that's why I stick to the older... Edge of Oblivion version, and if you need to um, see a tutorial on how to install that, I do actually have a tutorial video uh, in my channel somewhere. It's, I think it's my most popular video with a, like a whopping, I don't know, 12,000 or something, <laughs> something lame like that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the mod that I use for the clouds, um, and it, you know, it's a little bit of a mixture of Edge of Oblivion and um, Interstellar. I, I use like this cloud scattering effect from Interstellar, but it's really the core of the mod is the Edge of, of Oblivion. I'm kind of tapping back to my video here, and I see that I'm adding a whole bunch of boosters. That's right, I decided to do like a sort of, um, what do you call that, asparagus staging setup with this rocket design. I had originally wanted to go with the larger, like two and a half meter like the bigger version, but I decided that it was too heavy, too expensive, I didn't want to, plus I didn't have the correct engines, I don't think I have any of, wow, that's really loud, <laughs> I didn't have any of the, um, the correct engines, so that's why I decided just to go with the regular, I think those are just the regular one meter parts, and just make a bigger launch stage with the uh, asparagus setup. And I had to, I don't remember, I had to chop out a lot of failed attempts. <laughs> But uh, basically, this is the design that worked, so if you guys want to try it, go right ahead and build it. Uh, people always ask me, or maybe not always, but occasionally people ask me, Hey, can you upload your craft file on such and such website? And, I mean, that's fine, I, but I always, like, am blown away. I'm like, well, you could watch the video, right? I mean, I basically build it right in front of your eyes. <laughs> it, and it's basically just, I'm lazy, and I don't feel like uploading any craft files. But if you watch it... This is the design. It works pretty well. It does get a little bit unstable here. If you watch it, 
as I'm starting to make the gravity turn here, it starts to just wobble. Because what happens is it's top heavy and it's bottom heavy. And the middle is kind of just, it's a little weaker in the middle. But rest assured, it does manage to get its orbit just fine. Um, let's see. Someone else commented, Gamer later commented, the bug where your orbit will change if you warp fast over a celestial body change is fixed to 1.0. You don't need to slow down your warp there. And I, I love that they added that. Thank you, uh, game, game later 18. Um, because I would always miss that. I would always mess that up. I would just warp flat over like a sphere, sphere of influence change at like maximum warp and then all the calculations would be completely messed up. So that is a good bit of advice. Um, Ryan Moss said he loves the series and this game. Personally, I enjoy seeing the smaller rescue missions and the satellite missions, but that's just me. And that's that's totally cool. I, I know a lot of people do like those little those little missions because those are the, the basic building block missions that are going to get your, your basic fledgling space program off the ground. And they're a lot of fun, too, and they added a whole bunch of them. So I will probably be going back and doing a couple more of those just to show how they're done and maybe just to get that little extra bit of money in science. Uh, Tim Bruce, he's been with me for a while. He said, man, I was getting worried. Thought you might need some bail money. <laughs> but no, no bail bonds needed yet. Um, oh, and then he asked, he said something about Orbiter 2010. I actually did look up a clip of someone playing it. It looks friggin' hard. It looks really difficult. Uh, but still, it looks pretty awesome. And it would be something that I'm definitely interested in trying out. Maybe if uh, someday I'm feeling masochistic, I'll go ahead and grab it. I do believe it is free, so there's a possibility that I might be doing some Orbiter 2010 at some point. So here's me about to complete the orbit, doing the final orbital insertion burn. It's, but as I was saying before, with the texture pack, if you look at Planet Kerbin, it's got that like blue glow, that like blue haze, and I believe that's. Um, it was called like atmospheric scattering, I believe, and that came in the Interstellar pack. So that was the one thing I brought over from Interstellar, the um, Astronomer's Visual Pack Interstellar. That is not the movie Interstellar. <laughs> um, so here's me making my plan, my my uh, lunar transit plan here. And as you can see, I have lots of satellites in orbit. I'm just doing various satellite missions, which I didn't record. I only recorded one of them because I figured, hey, if, if you see me do one, you see me do them all. Here I am just getting just the right the right distance here. And you can see me focusing the moon. Now, this is a great little feature. I didn't know you could do this until fairly recently. You focus on the object, and you can see precisely the encounter that you're going to get. That's, that's like a 1,000% more helpful than just kind of guessing or eyeballing. Literally a thousand percent. Did all the math. Nope, no I didn't. <laughs> but here we go. About to warp forward to make the transit burn. On the night side. It always seems to be on the night side, doesn't it? Let's see. I'll pull up some other videos here. Maybe I can answer some of your guys' questions. People, people keep asking me to do like Twitch and live stream and stuff, and I probably should, because it seems like like that's what most people do nowadays, and it seems like a lot of people really appreciate that. So I might do that someday. Uh, let's see. Just kind of looking through some of my videos for some good questions that people ask me. That maybe I didn't get a chance to answer. Uh, again, Tim Bruce on my episode 10, Minimus Ferry, said the name, the the name of the line between day and night is called the Terminator. Indeed, good smooth journey. Um, go to space. Oh, someone posted a challenge: go to space in a single stage in a rocket. I probably could. Probably could. In fact, I might have done that at some point. But heck, I might as well try it again. Elijah Howland subbed. Thank you very much, Elijah. Um, someone asked which texture pack, I and mean, that's like the most common question I get asked is whatever um, texture pack. Oh, someone the Kerbal Wow said I downloaded City Lights in the wrong way, <laughs> probably because it's not actually City Lights. 
It's the Astronomer's Visual Pack uh, that actually is based off of the Clouds and City Lights mod, so that's probably why it looks completely different. And maybe if you already knew that, I probably did install it wrong, who knows, but all I know is that I like the way it looks. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see, tab back to the video. Here I am warping towards the moon. I just love the way that the planet Kerwin looks when uh, you're flying away from it like that. It's kind of kind of like an insane gesture, but hey, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Orbit kind of freaked out on me here for a second, but then it finally realized what it was doing. <laughs> So here we are, closing up the orbit, just to get myself into a low lunar orbit, to get that low science. Here I am doing just that. God, this game is cool. Probably my favorite game of all time. And I've played a lot of games. Probably the only game that manages to challenge me and yet astound me about how beautiful space is. And probably the only game where I actually learned some really, really useful information. Although, I don't know how useful Orbital Mechanics is to a music teacher, but... <laughs> I guess useful in a, like, nifty kind of way. My friends always joke around that I'm like the master of useless knowledge, that I have so much knowledge that is absolutely of no help to me whatsoever. <laughs> probably picked the wrong career, but hey. If I had only known about this game when I was a kid, I probably would have been an astrophysicist, but by this point in my life, I think I'm pretty much stuck. <laughs> stuck being a music teacher, but that's okay, I can still appreciate this stuff by playing Kerbal, it's a good outlet. But I decided to pick this little crater right here as a place to land. Lovely shot of Kerbin right there. But yeah, if you guys want to see me do some like Twitch live streams, heck, by all means, I'll probably make a Twitch account. Might as well give it a shot. Though don't expect perfection, because when, it, when I play this game live, I make a lot of mistakes that never make it to the final cut. And it's not because like I want to make you guys think I'm like perfect at this game or something, but I just feel like the the uh, feeling and style of my videos is, has always kind of been like tutorial-esque where if you're kind of new to the game you could watch my video and kind of learn how it's done so that's why I always kind of take the best takes of when you know of playing this game I mean every once in a while I'll show like a really stupid mistake that I make uh, or maybe it's more than once in a while who the heck knows but but uh, if, if you see me play this game live it'll be a lot sloppier most likely because, like I said, when I play this game, I'm less... I really don't pay attention a whole lot to the maths behind it. I'm kind of more about, like, yeah, that feels right, or, you know, stuff like that. It, it, by this point, you know, I've been playing this game for probably four or five years. I can just kind of feel what a spacecraft needs to look like, or look, you know, be like, in order to get to another planet. I practically have visited every single planet at some point or another, so to me now it's more of just like, um, more instinctual. But I'm sure, you know, if, if I wanted to be like real exact, I could get, you know, get the old calculator out and calculate exactly how much delta V is required and build a rocket that goes right down to the very last liter of fuel. <laughs> that always impresses me when people do that. I, heck, I once saw a video online of somebody who visited every single body in the system in one mission. They landed, I should say landed, they landed on every single planet, moon, and whatever in one mission. I couldn't believe it. It blew me away. It completely blew me away. They had one lander, it was like, uh, just a simple little, it was very small, you know, a couple atomic engines fueled it, but it was just so efficient. And it kept re rendezvousing with like the main craft. It just kept refueling and refueling and refueling. And they would both go to the next one, refuel, and then it would land and come back, refuel, go to the next one. It was an incredible video. I completely forget who it was by. I think I can probably look it up right now. Let's see. This is me typing. 
typing. <laughs> Might have been by Mr. Overfloater. Single launch to Lathe, Fall, Tylo, Pole, Bop, Duna, Ike, Moon, and Minmus. That might have been it. I can't remember right now, but it was it like blew me away. Now like that kind of player is impressive to me. Like that's unbelievable. The amount of like planning that must have went into that. Not to mention the skill to actually do it. Heck, that would that would take me like a month. <laughs> and and a month of just editing failed attempts. Here I go, my final lunar descent. Or mooner, I should say, excuse me. <laughs> this part always gets my heart pumping, my adrenaline flowing. I did decide to land basically in a crater within a crater. Because you call it cr craterception. <laughs> Kerbal craterception. I love the little dust particles. Not sure if that's a product of Astronomer's Visual Pack or if that's actually uh, part of the, n the native game. It's been so long since I haven't had a texture pack that I honestly don't don't even know what the stock uh, game looks like anymore. All I know is that I can't go back. Once I saw those sweet clouds or that sweet blue sky, I was like, nope, I'm sticking to that forever basically I'm always gonna have a texture pack installed but you know I'm waiting for the day that uh, that squad puts in their own kind of texture pack and we have touchdown there we are we have a landing on the moon I might have edited out a part where I did a bunch of science in fact I probably did I'm not sure unless I just yapped over it and didn't realize but I do uh, I do some surface science here here we go Got that assessment, I send that right back with my fancy schmancy satellite dish. Here's where I take my classic screenshots, where I try to find the perfect thumbnail. <laughs> I mean, that's what YouTube's all about, isn't it? Just the perfect thumbnails. Of course, I don't by all means have any perfect thumbnails because I'm too lazy to actually make a legitimate thumbnail. I know a lot of, a lot of people put a lot of time in their channels and it's super impressive, but I just don't have, I don't know, I just don't, I just don't do it. And I, I know that's why I'll never be a huge channel, but that's okay to me. I'm not really striving to be like one of the giants out there. You know, I'm, I'm happy with my small channel size, with like my, my group of fans. I love all you guys. You know, I just, I kind of like it at this level. But hey, if, you know, if someday my channel gets a little bigger, and it'll probably take years and years at this rate, that's fine too. For now, I just enjoy this as a hobby. You know, it's like at the end of the day when I come home from work, it's like, yeah, let's let's record a video and post it online. It's just relaxing. It's a lot of fun. And I feel like once I start getting like really heavily involved in editing and doing the proper thumbnails and all the proper things, I feel like it'll become more of a job. And that's what I don't want. I just want to kind of keep this as a really simple hobby that I can do in my spare time. There's me on the moon. Looking pretty good. I think that's Jeb. Yep, Jeb Dykerman. Beautiful sun right in the horizon there. Planting a little flag. Jeb at the east, far side crater. One small step for curb kind, I think I say. Something like that. One giant leap for curb kind. There we go. <laughs> Taken right from uh, Neil Armstrong right there. Or, or Neil Kerman, I guess I should say. You know, I'm surprised there isn't a Neil Kerman. And I'm not just saying that because my name is Neil. I mean, really, like, where is Neil Kerman? I mean, he possibly exists and I just don't realize, but shouldn't that be, like, the first... Kerbal that they make, uh, Neil Kerman. I don't. Heck, I don't know. They have Gene Kerman, who's supposed to be uh, Gene Krantz, and they have uh, what was his name, Kerman von Braun or von Kerman, <laughs> who's supposed to be like von Braun, the uh, rocket scientist. Heck, where the heck's Neil Kerman? And for that matter, like all the other ones, like Jim Kerman, Gus Kerman. You know, where are all those guys? Who knows? That's a question for Squad. But anyway, here's me derping around, trying to uh, 
grab the science from the science bay and not just, just not doing it, just totally failing. <laughs> Takes me a couple tries. I'm not sure why I didn't just edit this part out. Probably because I wanted to show myself derping around like a derp. <laughs> There's Jeb falling, falling all over himself. I think I tried to get that science. Yeah, because at this point, I was going to just ditch everything uh, and just return with the very top portion. But I think what ends up happening is I end up holding on to the whole spacecraft and the whole thing kind of just schlumps through the atmosphere because I, I, for, maybe I got lazy or maybe I was just too scared about the heat shield because that heat shield did look a little small for that, that bigger landing can. Honestly, I forget. It's been so long. Like, I recorded this video probably a month ago. Um, but ever since I learned that my mic didn't work, it kind of like made me lose all hope in myself. It made me lose interest. I was just like, oh man. And for a while after that, I was just like, yeah, I gotta get, gotta record that post commentary. I gotta do it. But I've just been, you know, preoccupied with either trying to get my hardware to work and my computer, or, or it was a case of summer laziness taking over. Who knows? But. I think I'm going to start recording a little more now that, you know, I have time, all my components work now, and get back into the swing of things. Here's me boarding. At this point, I did consider flying to another part of the moon, but then I took a look at my total Delta V and realized just probably not possible. But there I am getting the complete contract complete for exploring the moon. I have successfully explored the moon. Lots and lots of Kerbal credits and science, which will definitely help us. Because I think the next the next big target is Minmus. Now I love Minmus because you can definitely fly around to a lot of the biomes in Minmus, and I have done that in in videos prior, so I'll definitely do it again. You can fly to at least five or six different biomes if you build your ship right, because Minmus is a tiny little little bugger. I love those effects. Look at that blasting off the moon. Making my 90 degree turn right off the bat. You basically don't really need to get any sort of altitude on the moon. It's so easy to just to get off it. All you gotta do is move right over, but I'm here I'm dicking around as I say that. <laughs> just send that orbit out. Just straight to the horizon. I think in this particular mission I did use up almost all my fuel, which never really tends to happen. I either um, have way more, like I either budget way much, way too much fuel and end up with a ton left over, or I end up running out completely. There's never, <laughs> there's never a good balance. I never do it just right. <laughs> one of these days, I always say, one of these days I might do the actual maths and figure out the precise delta v. Here I am making that burn that I plotted. That's going to put us into low lunar orbit. And then here's me getting back home again. I think in the original video I did make a commentary on why I'm burning this direction. In case you guys don't know, basically you want to burn the opposite direction that the moon is revolving. So the moon is going counterclockwise around Kerbin. So in order to escape the moon properly, the most efficiently you want to burn clockwise and basically what that's going to do is cancel all that velocity that you have going with you that's something that always blew my mind like just immediately like wow like yes you're orbiting the moon but you don't realize you also have the moon's velocity and momentum going around Kerbin with you so by burning in this direction opposite of that that velocity you are canceling your Kerbin orbital velocity and essentially falling you're taking a nosedive off the moon from, what is it, like 11 million kilometers? <laughs> that's that's a long nosedive and basically falling right back into old planet Kerbin, right in the ocean, hopefully. I, don't, I forget where I land, but... I think it's that very fact that made me want to start making YouTube videos. I just thought that was so awesome that I had to, like, share with the world how cool I thought that was. <laughs> That's why I started making videos, this very game right here. I also wanted to teach, you know, people how to play this game so that they too could experience, like, the awesomeness of this. You 
know, after learning all this orbital mechanics and how it's actually done and learning that this is, yes, this is essentially what NASA does and what they did to get to the moon in the 60s, it's, uh, it really makes me appreciate, you know, what they did. And whenever I see, like, those conspiracy theorists who say we never went to the moon, I always just, like, want to tell them, like, you have, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you have no basis on your argument. I don't want to get, like, negative with conspiracy theorists. Like, it's a topic I wanted to avoid, but I just, the other day I read, I saw a video where someone was saying that the moon landing was impossible because of the Van Allen radiation belts, and it just left me with such a bad taste in my mouth, but then someone commented who had like a PhD in astrophysicist, he basically broke it down for him and owned him. <laughs> he owned him so bad and it just, it felt refreshing. I was like, thank God, somebody knows what they're talking about. It just made me realize that conspiracy theorists in general just don't trust science or scientists. They don't, they think that there's some big worldwide conspiracy that all scientists are in on and uh, so therefore they just reject anything that makes sense, like any facts or anything like that, they just, they want to ignore it. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, that this game has, has solidified my belief that yes, we did go to the moon in the 60s. I always did believe it, but I was like, once I played this game, I was like, okay, I'm definitely sure, because this all makes sense to me now, it all makes perfect sense. But anyway, enough of that stupid topic, let's move on. This is me jettisoning jettisoning the lower part which I'm what I'm left with here is the materials bay which I was certain was going to blow up I was like this thing's a goner and you can already see the temperatures are heating up in the batteries in various solar panels but it didn't matter to me so much because I knew that I already took the data from from both goo and the science junior and I put it in the capsule so I was okay if I was gonna lose materials bay but as you can see it's doing just fine in fact I don't even get a temperature warning if there's me wiggling the mouse I'm probably saying something like geez like here's a heat shield that I didn't even know existed this thing is surviving as long as that parachute survives I was probably saying that we're gonna be just fine it's usually stuff that I say when I re-enter like that you know, when I start to panic <laughs> Heck, when you're in the heat of the moment, <laughs> no pun intended, when you're in the heat of the moment, you kind of just start running through scenarios like, okay, if I can only just get the parachute, it's fine, we'll be fine. But it ends up being just fine, which is unbelievable. I always thought that thing was a goner. Slowing down a little bit here. As the last little bits of friction roll off the spacecraft, we start to have an acceptable velocity within the planetary atmosphere. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. It was like the basically the planet saying, nah, -uh, too fast. Gotta bleed off that uh, speed. Here you go, have some fire. <laughs> that should help. Here's me deploying the old parachutes. Of course it is at night time. I always seem to do everything at night. That's like the the running joke, the running gag. <laughs> There's a little g-force when the parachutes open. And I do believe I call this a successful mission, which it basically was. We're going to find out in a bit just how much uh, science we ended up getting. I'm here, I'm looking at the uh, <laughs> All the little decals inside the uh, craft. I love the amount of detail that they spent in this game. It's just, it's amazing. I mean, squad, they work hard. I remember, I remember when this game first came out. Now, I didn't play the very early. Like, I didn't play version point seven. I think was the first one. I think I started around point eleven, or maybe point ten. I can't remember. Whichever one like had the moon. That was like the first version I played when the moon just came out. Um, but I, I think back and how how much how far this game has come. It's come a long way. Can't believe I didn't fall over. <laughs> but here I am looking at the final uh, readout here. Managed to rack up 253 science in that mission, giving a total of 297 and 8,000 funds recovered for a total amount of funds 799,000. 
And Jeb gained 6 XP. Way to go, Jeb. He finally leveled up. He was behind uh, Valentina there for a sec, but now he's right there with her. Um, I think yeah, I think the next thing I say I want to buy is that, the, um, the research center. Just so I can start taking surface samples, which are very good for producing more science. But I think this is where I do my sign out. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. See you then.